Warning, the following profanity contains an episode. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Allbirds, Stamps.com, ZipRecruiter, and by the new medical reality show Chiropractical Jokers, where we replace real chiropractors with untrained comedians because how much more dangerous and useless could it really be? And now, The Scathing Atheist. This is April officially acknowledging that Heath is the all-time top Word Blitz champion, and Noah is the number one master of VR ProPud, now and in perpetuity. But even they did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. It's April 14th. And we're celebrating the Holy Week by being wholly unreligious. There you go. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Queen Latifah's New Jersey, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Christians called dibs state by state. Donald Trump's pity party actually had some people show up because their moms made him go. Mm -hmm. And Christians will try to tone down the rhetoric on abortion by comparing it to the Holocaust. (laughs) But first, the diatribe. During his first campaign for the presidency, then VP George H.W. Bush held a press conference at the O'Hare International Airport in Chicago. And among the reporters present was one Robert I. Sherman from the American Atheist News Journal, who actually got a chance to ask Bush a question. And quite logically, given the outlet he was representing, he asked him what his campaign was going to do to win the votes of Americans who are atheists. At first, Bush tried to brush off the question by saying, quote, I guess I'm pretty weak in the atheist community. Faith in God is important to me, end quote. But Sherman pressed him. He followed up by asking if Bush could at least recognize the equal citizenship and patriotism of atheist Americans, to which Bush famously replied, quote, no, I don't think that atheists should be considered as citizens, nor should they be considered patriots. This is one nation under God, end quote. A flabbergasted Sherman asked if he could at least state for the record that he was on board with separation of church and state, to which Bush reluctantly agreed, but added, quote, I'm just not very high on atheists, end quote. Now, as egregious as that was, believe it or not, it was not the worst thing Sherman got on record from the Bush campaign. About a year later, Sherman was in the midst of a lawsuit against his local school district for trying to force his kid to say the pledge. So, When he was able to get a sit down with Ed Murnane, the co-chair of Bush's 88 campaign, he asked him, you know, what the campaign thought of the lawsuit. Here's the on the record exchange. Sherman, American atheists filed the Pledge of Allegiance lawsuit yesterday. Does the Bush campaign have an official response to this filing? Murnane, it's bullshit. Sherman, what is bullshit? Murnane, everything that American atheist does, Rob, is bullshit. Sherman, thank you for telling me what the official position of the Bush campaign is on the issue. Murnane, you're welcome. Now, here's the most fucked up aspect of all of this. It wasn't controversial. I mean, it wouldn't be right to say that the media ignored Bush's naked bigotry, right? Like I know about it, obviously, but it wasn't exactly a scandal. It wasn't seen as anywhere near as egregious as, for example, his opponent wearing a helmet. If it wasn't for Trump, it would be impossible to imagine a mainstream American politician saying something like that today. But 35 years ago, it barely even made the news. I bring this up because in the 90s, there was a tectonic shift in American religiosity that has fascinated statisticians ever since. I mean, you can look at the numbers a lot of way, but the starkest subset of the numbers is to look at American adults between the ages of 1835. In the 1991 General Social Survey, 87% of that group identified as Christian and only 8% had no religious affiliation. That number hadn't changed significantly in the two decades, by the way, that they had been doing that survey. But by 1997, it was down to 73% identifying as Christian and 20% unaffiliated. 
the numbers have continued to move in the right direction ever since, but never with the kind of rapidity that we saw over that short period. Now, many, if not most people, assume that this is primarily a function of the Internet, right? But as unofficial statistician of the scathing atheist Ryan Burge points out, the data doesn't really support that as a complete explanation. After all, according to the Census Bureau, by 1997, only about one in five American households had Internet access. I, I mean, 20 percent having access to the Internet means more than 20 percent having access to the information, but it's still not enough to explain such a precipitous drop. A, a lot of theories have been put forward to explain it, of course, but here's one to consider. So by 1987, American atheists had an accredited reporter in the Illinois press pool that got to ask George Bush a question. Yes, Bush got it as wrong as it's possible to get it, but he still got asked. In the wake of Bush's bigotry, American atheists sent a letter to every member of Congress urging them to censure the president for impugning the patriotism of a minority group. And no, none of them signed on to that resolution, but a lot of them saw the fucking letter. A lot of them were aware, many for the first time, that atheists were taking notes of the bigoted shit that they were saying. That letter went out on February of 1990. I mean, there were a lot of demographic forces pushing us towards decreased religiosity in the early 1990s. But one of them that far too often gets overlooked is all the hard and thankless work American atheists was doing in the decades leading up to it. Hell, consider the whole reason American atheists came into existence back in 1963. These adults from 18 to 35 in 1997. That represented the first generation of Americans to grow up in schools that weren't allowed to have mandatory Christian prayer. Our activism matters. Our organizations matter. Our communities matter. Even our defeats can help move us forward if there's somebody like Robert Sherman there to do the legwork and publicize them afterwards. And I point this out because a lot of people, even a lot of atheists, cast aspersions on things like the American Atheist Convention that's going on this weekend in Atlanta. They're written off as useless echo chambers of self-indulgence, but the communities they build and the activists they inspire matter. They build tomorrow's world, and we owe it to yesterday to do at least as much for the future as they did for us. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast and bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the DTW and EWR to my just driving Heath Enright and Eli <laughs> Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to fly to the American Atheist Convention in Atlanta this weekend. Mm hmm. I'll be the one walking around with the bottomless cone of boiled peanuts. Uh, yes, they are mine. No, you can't have one. Mm -hmm. Cool. Aren't you bringing your baby? Right. Yes. Also, you could meet my adorable son and the peanuts. All right. Well, while I shake out my giddiness over that, we're going to pause for a word from this week's first sponsor, Allbirds. But put the lime in the coconut is insane. I think he means squeeze the juice. Well, that's not what he says. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, Eli, what's up? Um, I was just looking over the copy for the Allbirds ad this week. Um, mm -hmm. They have that new shoe, the Allbirds Tree Dasher 2. And? Yeah, and, and they recommend it for a new pair of shoes for spring. Yeah, I actually got a pair. They're super comfortable. Good stuff. Plus, they're made out of sustainable materials, of course. Uh, right. No, it's just, do people own multiple pairs of shoes? Oh, you're done with the question? Yes, they do. At the, at the same time. Yep. Yeah, man. Why? What, what do you do? Well, I buy two pairs of the same black sneakers because they're buy one, get one free at the shoe store that I go to. And then I wear them literally every day until they fall apart. Like they fall off my feet. Right. Okay. Well, no, most people don't do what you do. They buy shoes for like the season, especially when they look great and feel great. Like the Allbirds Tree Dasher 2. Spring forward with the Allbirds Tree Dasher 2 running shoe. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Okay. Um, I guess we'll put that in the ad. Sure. Wait, so, so do you, do you own multiple pairs of pants? Mm. Own or wear? Um, own. I own multiple pairs of pants. Yes. Okay. Great. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, we have a depressing update to a story we first mentioned just over 100 episodes ago. Mubarak Bala, a Nigerian atheist jailed in 2020 for insulting Islam, was sentenced last week to 24 years in jail for the imaginary crime of blasphemy. This comes despite years of pressure from atheist and human rights groups and despite the fact that Muslims believe the dude he insulted has the power to turn him into fucking dust whenever the fuck he feels like it. 
But despite the candid admission of their God's pettiness and impotence that goes with it, the courts condemned the 37-year-old president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria to nearly a quarter century's imprisonment. Yeah, you know who's got a terrible sense of humor and stomps out in a huff during a roast situation? Omnipotent gods who are real. That's yeah. definitely how that goes. <laughs> yep. Can't take a joke. You know that there's some asshole on Twitter who would still call it punching down, though, right? It's a, no, it's literally God <laughs> punching <laughs> down. Yeah, so a l- little bit of depressing backstory here. Bala was arrested for this crime in 2020, but that's not where the legal problem stemming from his atheism began. In fact, back in 2014, his family had him committed to a mental hospital for his lack of belief. After his release, he was the target of constant death threats to the point where he spent the next five years more or less in hiding. Then six years later, he was arrested for, quote, writing stuffs on his Facebook page that are provocative and annoying to the Muslims, end quote. Cool. And in one of history's least convincing attempts at justification, the petition for his arrest adds that his comments would, quote, incite Muslims and provoke them to take law into their own hands, end quote. In other words, if they didn't punish him for expressing his religious belief, which is, by the way, protected under the Nigerian Constitution, huh, is it? other people might have broken laws. So he had to be punished. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's carancel culture gone too far. <laughs> It's so depressing. I don't know what to do, but shitty yeah, dad puns. Yeah, it's hard, like, hard I, to I, do anything outside of puns. Yeah. Okay. Upside, as Noah Heath and our editing room floor can attest, Josh Hawley has made me commit a lot of crimes. Like a no, lot. No, that's true. So, yeah. Get him. After more than a year in legal limbo where we didn't even know for sure that Bala was still alive, he was officially charged with 10 counts of causing a public disturbance. After first pleading his innocence, he ultimately changed his plea to guilty, presumably with the promise of a lighter sentence. And as harsh as two dozen years in jail seems, blasphemy is punishable by death in the particular state he was being tried in. So this actually might be the lighter sentence that he pled down to. Uh, Regardless, it's a fucking travesty and it's a stark reminder of the kind of shit that happens when religion takes control of your government. Fuck yeah. And in Calling Blacksies News. Florida Republicans almost did a good thing this week as a bill to name a federal courthouse after Joseph Woodrow Hatchett, the Florida Supreme Court's first black justice, made its way through the state legislature. But then at the last minute, because this is Florida we're talking about, they had to side tackle in some cases themselves Mm -hmm. when they learned that Hatchett ruled for common sense in a case about Christian prayers at public schools. Right. Yeah. No, it's not that. The Florida GOP hates all African-Americans, just the ones that disagree with them about anything. (laughs) You guys got to relax. It's just a goat demon statue. It's about satanic heritage, not hate. (laughs) Yeah, We just relax about the statue. Yeah. So little backstory here. Joseph Woodrow Hatchett, who passed away last year, wasn't just the state's first black Supreme Court justice. He was also the first black federal circuit court judge in the Deep South. And to give you an idea of the kind of adversity he had to overcome, when he took the bar exam in 1959, he did it in a segregated hotel he wasn't allowed to stay in. Wow. But like I said, he once ruled on an incredibly clear cut establishment cause violation. So fuck that guy. So here's the stupid case. As old people like Noah will remember, in 1992, the Supreme Court ruled that school sponsored prayer at graduation ceremonies were, in fact, unconstitutional because, uh, of course, they are. It's a school. Fuck are you thinking? However, the Duval County Public School District came up with a super smart workaround because the Constitution is a T-Rex and it can't see you if you aren't moving. (laughs) They told their students that they could vote on one of them to deliver a speech at graduation. And if that student led a prayer, well, then that was up to them. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, that'll be great. Maybe they can give Justice Hatchet like uh, 60% of a statue. Oh, something Jesus like that. Christ. <laughs> yeah. Well, so clever as that one weird trick was, it did eventually make it to Hatchet's courtroom in 1999, where in a two to one decision, he ruled that, yes, I can see you, even though you're wearing camo pants at this outdoor wedding. (laughs) And it was that decision that caused 147 Republicans to vote no on the fast tracked bill to rename the courthouse, including 10 Republicans who were co-signers of the bill. Woof. 
But it was bound to happen eventually, though, right? They, they ran out of Democratic shit to obstruct, and obstruction is their whole playbook now. <laughs> so, do yeah. something, right. <laughs> so, yeah, to be fair, the bill isn't dead yet. It's just no longer fast tracked, but it has a lot to overcome at this point, and it's Florida. So, I'm definitely not holding out a lot of hope. But hey, congrats to America's dick for very nearly doing a good thing for a black guy. I know. Close is no cigar, but I have a hunch it's the best they're going to do for a really, really long time. And in peaching to the choir news. Brilliant. <laughs> we got a reminder last week that Georgia is not quite the bastion of progressive political philosophy that we might have thought it was. Yes, they did elect Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff to the Senate. That's a, a black guy and a Jewish guy in Georgia, yeah. both Democrats. And they gave their electoral votes to Joe Biden in 2020, allegedly asterisk. But <laughs> apparently they still have a couple Republicans left. And we got a reminder last week that one of those Republicans is Candace Taylor, who recently launched her campaign for governor. She wants to primary Brian Kemp because, you know, that liberal cuck rhino has got to go. And her slogan is Candace Taylor Jesus guns baby. Jesus fucking Christ. Just a list. <laughs> yeah, but in, in case anybody needed a reminder that the state that sent Marjorie Taylor Green to Congress still has shitty racists in it. Here's Candace Taylor for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Everybody is a shitty racist. It's the name of my upcoming children's book. Oh, so nice. if anyone liked to buy, yeah. <laughs> Ted Cruz is mad about it. So, <laughs> here's the latest from Candace Taylor. During a speech for the Georgia Republican Assembly last week, she announced that her Georgia is going to be a Christian theocracy. Oh, so that's fun. Ooh. And she explained her slogan here. She said, quote, my slogan is Jesus guns and babies. It, it's not, again, it's not a slogan. That's just a list. It's a list of things. <laughs> that's not a slogan. That's not a, whatever. Continuing Jesus, because that's our first amendment, right? It's the right to worship Jesus Christ freely. It's why we have a country. Nope. Don't talk to me about <laughs> separation of church and state. That's why we have a country. We are the church. <laughs> And we run the state. Like she's Louis the fucking 14th. Yep, that is, that is, uh, they toss a mar. Are you fucking mm -hmm. kidding me? Yep. There's no way she knows about that, but that's no. what she fucking sounds like. We are the yes. church and we run the state. She also added, they don't get to silence us. Sad. And that's the end of the quote from that part. And just to be clear, when she said they, the context was Judaism, Islam, and Buddhism. That's what she was talking about right before that. So that last comment was Jews, Muslims, and Buddhists don't get to silence us in response to something. Us, the Christians. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and if they do silence her, then Jesus guns babies. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's impossible <laughs> to hear that slogan without picturing Christ <laughs> going full Anakin with a Kalashnikov, right? I mean, okay. God, that's an accusation. <laughs> Also, now I really want to meet the Jewish Muslim Buddhist coalition that was silencing Candace Taylor and other Christian right lunatics in Georgia somehow. Like, great work. Right? Whatever you did to confuse yeah. them or you just they were just like dumbstruck by something you did. That's good work. Stay safe, by the way. <laughs> and on that note, we'll take a break for this week's second sponsor, Stamps.com. Guys, guys, yeah, where are those two? It's almost time to leave. No, no, let us out. Oh, is that you? No, let us out. Come on. Gosh, is that you? Dang, guys. Do you hear us? Oh, thank God. Oh, thank you. Air. What are you guys doing? <sighs> oh, what does it look like we're doing? No, we're saving the company money. Like a bunch. By locking yourself in a box? <laughs> no, silly. We're shipping ourselves to the American Atheists Conference this weekend using stamps.com. And we're saving an arm and a leg while we do it. Wait, what's stamps.com? Stamps.com gives you access to all post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And you get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. 76%? You are saving a bundle. Right? We sure are. Whether you're an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Stop overpaying for shipping with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code SCATHING for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code SCATHING. Okay, just one problem, though, guys. You're not allowed to mail people 
What? We're not? No. Ah, okay. We should go open the box with Anna and Lucinda then. Yeah, but like slowly because they might be mad. Yeah. Actually, no, uh, you, you do that. I'm not yeah. doing it. You do it. You. Not it. And in before you go, Bert News. In case you missed it, it's tough to be a GOP theocrat these days. Your base just killed themselves in record numbers by not wearing a face hat. Young people are leaving the party and church at record numbers. And your old boogeymen just don't hit the way they used to. Which is why the latest desperate grab at transphobia goes something like, they're turning our kids trans with surgeries when they're four years old. Mm -hmm. Or something. Now, to be clear... They're not. The actual medical question that's being asked these days is should trans kids be able to take puberty blockers so that they don't go through puberty and gain secondary sexual characteristics that will often cause terrible dysmorphia and take years of surgery and hormones to reverse? And the answer, by the way, is yes. You, sh you should be able to pause your puberty while you figure out what you want your body to look like for the rest of your life. Puberty blockers are harmless and their effects are reversible. But you know who disagrees? Congresswoman Lauren Boebert who tweeted this week that you should have to be 21 to make any decisions about your sexuality or identity. Or I did. Oh, I hmm. something tells me this doesn't apply to purity balls or promise rings though. Huh? <laughs> right? By the way, if you're looking for purity balls and promise rings, check out adamandeve.com. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them the scathing atheist. They have a fun you. version of those things. <laughs> yeah. So here's the tweet quote. We require people to be 21 to purchase alcoholic beverages and 21 to purchase tobacco products. Uh -huh. Why is it so unreasonable to require people to reach a certain level of maturity before making life altering decisions about their sexuality and identity? OK, but waiting to make life altering decisions about sexuality and identity would be fucking puberty blockers, though, right? <laughs> yeah, right. literally yep. what, the, that's Jesus what that is. A couple other things about this tweet. First of all. Bobert's actually on record saying that she thinks kids should have access to guns. So maybe you're not the best with age based metaphors, just as, as a note. Sure. Secondly, you know who made a big decision before the age of 21 about their sexuality and identity? Lauren Bobert, who dropped out of school and had a baby before the age of 21. But, you know, maybe she doesn't consider childbirth as big a decision as pronouns. Right. Yeah. Those are huge. Also, isn't making a commitment about your immortal soul like even more impactful in, in your worldview? <laughs> right? I mean, kids should have to wait until they're 21 to declare a religion too, no? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I gotta say, I agree with Bobert on this, whether she meant this or not. If every kid was a non-binary agnostic until age 21, the world's clearly better. Just like, <laughs> yeah. objectively better. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would be worried about our nation's supply of jean jackets if that were the case. But otherwise, I'm for it. Otherwise, I am for it. Okay. One last thing about lobotomy, for someone who talks a lot about protecting kids, it's always good to remind just everybody that her husband took his dick out and showed it to teenagers at a bowling alley. Sure did. Yep. When he was 24 and she was 17 while they were first dating, side note, yikes, he decided <laughs> to show two girls at the snack bar of his local bowling alley his winky. And fun fact, he is not trans, so sty in the eye and all that. Either way, you literally never have to listen to anything Lauren Boebert has to say. But when she does tweet stuff like this, it's 100% important to remind her that her husband showed his dick to teenagers at a bowling alley. <laughs> if someone could make a bot like the fuck you Yoko Ono guy just to respond that to everything she tweets, I would really appreciate That'd it. That'd be great. Thank you. Also, her pop-up food stand from a restaurant was like all pestilence and just gave a shitload of people food poisoning. Add that, the, add that to the bot. That'd be great. Yeah. And in they were Nebraskan for it news tonight. Fantastic. I would like to take a second right now to pin a scathing atheist medal of godless badassery onto atheist Nebraska State Senator Megan Hunt. She notched a win for the good guys last week after leading a filibuster that effectively killed LB 933, a so-called trigger law that would ban abortion in all circumstances the second it's legal to do so. The bill, which would have banned abortion even in cases of rape and incest and would incidentally ban in vitro fertilization and doctors assisting people with ectopic pregnancies, and, and to be clear, would be unconstitutional bullshit even if it didn't, would have been the nation's most restrictive anti-abortion law if it had managed to get past Megan Hunt's godless badassery, which, again, it didn't. 
That's right, Megan. You're first at the baby buffet this week. You earned it, girl. Fuck yeah. Hey, can we do like a trigger law that says when it becomes legal, you're allowed to like shit on the front porch of Republicans the moment that's legal? Can we? I add? feel like we can. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That law already exists. It's called the law of the land. Okay. <laughs> now, I know that for some of you, the term atheist senator from Nebraska might seem almost oxymoronic. But if you've been in this movement for a while, you'll know that Nebraska is the state that invented atheist state senators. The legendary Ernie Chambers spent years as the Ooh, only openly Ernie atheist C. member e. of any state legislature in the country. And Hunt is clearly building on his legacy of unholy righteousness. And holy hell was that clear in the speech she gave to kick off the filibuster. It ended with this amazing mic drop where she basically jujitsu their religious justification bullshit. I love this so much. Quote, if I go to the pearly gates and meet your God someday, which sounds great. I hope I do. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get in any trouble for killing all your bills who vote for this. I don't think your God's going to have any problem with that. And I don't think I'm going to see any of you there either. End <laughs> quote. In other words, burn in hell, you fucking hypocrites. Exactly. <laughs> Just a bunch of Nebraska Republicans up at the pearly gates and God's like, why do you think I invented abortion, idiots? It was like for Nebraska, basically. <laughs> it was almost entirely for you. You're the worst. I'm all knowing, idiots. <laughs> and and I feel like this is an important reminder because I, I know a lot of atheists in more progressive parts of the country can have a fuck those rednecks attitude about red states. And when you see the overwhelmingly Christian culture that oozes out of those places and the fucking Congress people they generally elect and shit, it's easy to see why. But, you know, 14 percent of Alabamians aren't Christian, right? 45 percent of Utahns aren't Mormon. There are Lucinda Lusions in Georgia and Seth Andrews in Oklahoma and Megan Hunts in Nebraska. And those people need the support of atheist activists more than anybody. Absolutely. OK, but I can still use the southern accent as shorthand for stupid. Right. Well, like when I'm doing I, do, I feel like you're not. I, I, I do a really smart southern accent guy on D&D minus. So I think I cancel it out. So I think we're there. Nice. Yep. That's a, a wash. So, yes, you are. <laughs> Stevens. You're welcome. Everybody in the Nothing South. Nothing bad has ever happened to the Southern people. I think I'm fine. <laughs> and finally tonight, we have two big pieces of Donald Trump news. And I think I'm actually happy about that. So when he was in office, Trump, he's constantly in the news. And it was obviously a nightmare most of the time. But now it's kind of like the sex relapse with your terrible ex. You know what I'm saying? It's not healthy. And you know it's not healthy. But you don't not want it like you want to yeah. hear it you want to speak for yourself hey some it. people's terrible exes are me so. <laughs> <laughs> is that oh, I, I, moving on so the trump news it's mostly stupid sad and uh, honestly amusing it's eerily similar to the the relapse with the ex and it involves giant lies okay pretty much exactly like the relapse that i'm talking about <laughs> item one trump hosted a viewing party at mar-a-lago for a new movie about how the 2020 election was stolen by Joe Biden. And it was really sad. This is a really sad party. And item two, Trump called himself the most honest human being ever created by God. Okay. Really said that. I mean, either that's a weird lie or he's more of a misanthrope than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, look, all the nouns are tied for most honest thing ever created by God. So I, I feel like we have to give that to him on a technicality. <laughs> oh, we do. That's true. All right. So let's start with the really sad pity party slash movie premiere. Trump's been in the same snit f for a year and a half now. And one of his people was like, all right, you're still in a snit, man. You want to have a, a party where everyone says you really won, huh? Bestest boy party. We'll have a movie. We'll show a movie. And he was like, yes, I do want that. So they did that. So they set up a big release party for this new liar documentary. The movie is made by David Bossy, the president of Citizens United. Yes, that Citizens United, mm. arguably the worst Supreme Court decision in my lifetime. And you're probably wondering at this point, will the movie title exude some anti-Semitic David Icke energy? Yes, it will. The title is Rigged, the Zuckerberg funded plot to defeat Donald Trump. Ah, yes. How banning undeniably false information from our platform is politically biased. The movie, right. everybody. Yeah, hard to think of a bigger self-owned than, well, if we can't lie, how can we compete? Yeah. 
All right, that's going to bring us to a statement by Donald Trump that CNN called his, quote, most ridiculous claim maybe ever. And oh, there's ooh. so much competition for that. And CNN fully acknowledged that. As an example, they mentioned the time that Trump suggested that Ted Cruz's father might have been part of the Kennedy assassination, which is actually very plausible compared to other Trump stuff. So True. I guess that's kind of a bad example. Yeah. Trump also claimed that Lysol and photons would possibly cure COVID if you just put that stuff inside your body, like I in remember your that bloodstream. One. Yep. He claimed that windmills can cause cancer. Mm-hmm. He claimed yep. that he is six foot four, two hundred thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. He claimed one. that he's a, a stable genius, and he claimed that his wife Melania loves him. Well, <laughs> that's all theoretically possible, uh, at least in a different universe. But not the claim from last week in North Carolina during his delightful <laughs> GOP fracturing tour that he's doing right now. He said, exact quote. I've got to be the cleanest. And then, of course, you know, he was going to finish the sentence, so he had to switch to a different sentence. I've got to be the cleanest. I think I'm the most honest human being, perhaps, that God has ever created. End exact quote. I wonder if the person interviewing him sort of like paused to see if he would actually suck into himself like a singularity when he said that. <laughs> or well, So, okay, I feel like playing that clip and the resulting lack of a lightning strike should be all the proof atheists ever need, right? <laughs> we should show up to fucking debates with it. And then the person we're debating will go, well, okay, I give, I give up. Exhibit A, we're done, right? Yeah, we're, we're done. done. Yeah. And by the way, I think the big, that's a huge lie. There's so much to that lie. But I think the biggest part of the lie is the word cleanest that he threw in at the beginning and then had to like divert him. <laughs> he smells like raw chicken juice right now. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. You mm-hmm. pour that stuff out of the like the diaper container. That's what he's, I've never been more certain that's what he smells like at, at all times, I would say. All right. So with that olfactory concept lingering in your nostrils, we're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Gentile Manji. And when we come back, we're going to discover peak caucasity. Hi, I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, hiring can be an awful chore. Resumes to sort through. Interviews to schedule. It's a pain in the neck, but it can all be worth it for the chance to get rid of that guy. Yeah, you know that guy in your company? The one who's a sexual harassment lawsuit just waiting to happen. Or who expresses his backwards Trumpian politics at the slightest provocation. And you can't really fire him just for being a Trumper, but you really wish you could. So you just you just need a replacement for that guy. Or maybe he's just generally irritating and uh, maybe smells bad. Oh, yeah. Well, now you can get to that sweet, sweet day a lot faster with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its technology identifies people with the right experiences and invites them to apply for your job so you get qualified candidates fast. With results like that, it's no wonder four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And that's one day closer to firing that guy. That's right. See why ZipRecruiter is effective for businesses of all sizes. Try ZipRecruiter for free at this web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G. ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Ah, man, it's a good thing we don't have that guy in our company, right, guys? No. Keith? Okay. I'll admit that I'm only peripherally aware of that influencer is even a thing but even i know that the worst variety of them are the white christian ones universal maxim which we're gonna evidence the (laughs) fuck out of on this week's god awful mini so tell us heath what will we be breaking down today we watched abortion that's the title (laughs) (laughs) but that's a true statement like literally and also metaphorically and the title spiritually (laughs) we watched Abortion. Yeah. Capital A, lowercase a. We sure did. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you've ever been forced into debate about abortion with a surf instructor who found Jesus when he was eight, and you'd like to ruin the party by making him literally cry, you will love this 
YouTube video. It's literally arguing abortion with an insta couple. I'm in hell. Yeah. <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> All right. So is there anything that you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst glasses. Maybe best best. Ooh. Huh. So this whole thing is it's batshit crazy and it's infuriating and it's evil. But there's one moment where this shitty couple interviews uh, a lady who's wearing <laughs> the silliest oversized glasses and they're you know they're like leopard camouflage and this couple they're trying so hard but they can't look away and they can't ignore the giant <laughs> it's like it was like yeah. Burt Reynolds with the oversized hat like level mm-hmm. and they're trying to like take it seriously and ask questions and they they can't handle it they keep cutting back to them badly disguised praying mantis is yeah. a great description yeah so i i was going to go with best worst Failure to be named Todd and Allison. All right, so I don't know who the fuck these people are. Apparently, they're famous Insta couple type whatever people or something. But they are the most generic and boring white people. Like if if you see these people at a party, you're like, oh god. If I'm not watching you, fuck. Why am Why am I observing you in any? <laughs> why way? do you exist? Yeah. Right. So this is Cole, and I forgot her name, Savannah. Yeah. Cole and Savannah. Wait, is it seriously Cole and Savannah? I believe yeah. it is. Yeah. Like, That's not much less Caucasian than Todd and Allison, but yeah. Jesus. Cole and Savannah milk toasts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've just begun. They're called the LeBrant family. They have 13.1 million followers. Stay your <sighs> hand, oh death. They are most famous. Cole was a Vine star who came in second place on the American race with his mom. And they are most famous as a family for faking that one of their children had cancer in like a clickbait video. It was the clickbait video was called she was diagnosed with cancer. And they talk about how they took their kid to the hospital. And then six minutes in, they are like, but she didn't have cancer. But we, we thought about how sad we would be if she did. So they made this movie. So that wouldn't be their worst video. I got you. Exactly. Great. Which brings me to my best worst, agree to disagree. So Savannah and Cole's take here is not we want to make abortion illegal, which they do. They're just lying. Like they think they're being clever and tricking us. They just want to like give us their side of the story of abortion. They just want to give us a choice about it. Is that what? Yeah. (laughs) But their side of the story is it's a fucking murder genocide baby holocaust so the whole like but we're fine if you decide to do it think that's rings a bit hollow right it sure does <laughs> yeah so yeah so the video starts the very first thing we see is this note that tells us that any ad revenue for this movie will be given to fucking crisis pregnancy centers those are places that pretend to be abortion clinics to rope people in and 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 trick them into listening to Christian propaganda. So I went and quickly watched an offsetting Hardy's ad for Planned Parenthood. (laughs) Exactly. I just burned a bunch of carbon. I don't know if that even makes sense, (laughs) but I didn't like what I saw. So offset something. So, and then, so we see these images of a fetus growing from a tiny little seedling into a full blown baby. And of course there's a very conspicuous heartbeat in the background the whole Mm -hmm. time. Sure. Yeah. And from these pictures, we know that it's a shrimp, 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 full grown baby, Sir Ben Kingsley. (laughs) That's approximately how it works. To be clear, this, this fetus we see is like super evil looking. And apparently I find Ben Kingsley to be super evil. I didn't catch that part of it, but it's super evil. Like I want to kill that thing. Like it's not helping their case. That should, you should kill that if that's happening. Yeah. So this narrator cuts in. We'll never see the narrator. This is not Cole, but the narrator cuts in and goes like, you know, abortion, right? Like, whoa. (laughs) And then he explains that abortion is worse than the Rwandan genocide and the Holocaust put together. Yes. Okay. Here are literally the two sentences next to each other. Can't we love both the mother and the baby? Abortion is worse than the Holocaust. <laughs> well, as he's saying that, it's showing the images of like, yeah, here's how many died in the Rwanda genocide. Here's how many died in the Holocaust. Here's how many babies died in abortion. Yeah. Yeah. This is the second time we've dealt with a movie that uses Holocausts as a unit. Yep. yep. Genocides as a unit. Yeah. Uh-huh. How many? De- that's it's not great. Yeah. But but so, yeah, after comparing this to the Holocaust while calling for a less polarizing conversation, 
the narrator says, you know, you have your opinion and I have mine, but what really matters is God's opinion. And I'm like, oh, I bet it matches exactly with yours, doesn't it? <laughs> he goes, where is God's heart at? And I wrote in my notes, oh, oh, I know this one. It's the brass casket. It's the brass <laughs> casket. <laughs> so, okay, so then we take a quick break from stock footage to meet the generic. We meet Todd and fucking Allison so they can give us some direct address. Oh, I was so happy when they appeared on the screen. They look like a computer simulation filled in the background of a New Jersey nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get America's per day abortion stats. Mm -hmm. Apparently we have 2,363 abortions per day. I, I tried to verify that number. There, it, the number's all over the map, but that actually seems to be fairly close to correct. I feel like we can do better. No? Yeah, Absolutely. Is it me or are they inferring from this intro that the CDC won't admit that the number one cause of death in America is abortion? Oh, yeah, that is that is. Yeah, mm -hmm. they say the, the CDC says that heart disease is the leading cause of death, but that's only eighteen hundred people a day. OK, but that number would be higher if we didn't allow abortion, right? Fair. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and But it's just like if, what, like, OK, but we do way fewer abortions than like. We eat pounds of cheese per day as a country. This documentary should be about <laughs> cheese since it's the larger number. What the fuck? Do you know how many microbacteria in your biome are dying as we speak? <laughs> they go, how can we better help end abortion? And I wrote in my notes, I bet their answer isn't comprehensive sex education and free birth control, is it? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So then we sat down with our first talking head. This is Dr. Anthony Leventino. And they're going to speak to him in the echoiest possible room. <laughs> they really do. We've actually run into him before over on God Awful Movies. But quick reminder, this guy's daughter got hit by a car and now he's crazy because abortions remind him of what his dead daughter's body looked like. So that's why he's against abortion now. His daughter was kind of like fetal in her appearance. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, the trauma of losing a child made him more sane as it Logical. so often does. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I also love at the end, he's like, you know, doctors other than me aren't that smart. And as he's saying that, he taps his chest, even though he's wearing a lavalier mic yeah. <laughs> while he's talking about how smart he is. A pretty clever guy. <laughs> 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 and then we hear from Dr. Kathy Altman, who's going to give us some fucking blood on the highway descriptions of how abortions are performed. Oh, and Kathy Altman, by the way, spells her name like she really doesn't want you to Google her. But I did. <laughs> and her results are all from focus on the fucking family. Oh. So, uh, yeah. 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 She used to think women shouldn't have to bear children against their will. But then she thought better of that. She she has to describe how she was an abortion enthusiast at first. She she went in her off hours to get a local abortionist to teach her dismemberment abortions. And I'm like, I don't I don't think they called it that, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you remember you remember uh, Thanos's daughter Nebula? It's like that. They, take, <laughs> they, they have like just a big uh, clamps and they take them apart one piece at a time and then they just leave them out there so you can look at it for a while. It's kind of fun yeah. for everybody. No, imagine uh, Hangman, but in reverse, right? It's like that. <laughs> she actually says, you know you're done when you see their little brains leak out. <laughs> yes. I, I wrote in my note when she said that, I said, she's going to make us put our hands in a bowl of spaghetti, isn't she? <laughs> this is, I don't know this part. <laughs> okay. So I feel like you were joking, but she's like, well, also, you know, sometimes we're on a budget. We just use like chopsticks. And, get up in there. <laughs> and then uh, you, you smush your fist inside and crush the uh, leftovers like, you know, like you're squeezing a bowl of spaghetti. It's like yeah. that. Yeah, that's exactly. almost her exact words. And then but after that's over, generic white guy pipes in to summarize how little he knew about abortion when they set out to make this documentary. Cole trying to grasp causality almost killed Heath and Wright. Like <laughs> watching Heath. Okay, no, so you know grandmas, right? You guys know grandmas? <laughs> I was thinking about this. It's like they're two before you, right? And I'm so I'm one hold on, hold on. I'm now. Hold on. I'm count it back. You gotta count it backwards. Five one, two. So moms are like in between Savannah? 
<laughs> help yeah, me out. Help like, me out. You do the number stuff. <laughs> Keith's notes in order as Cole explains that if his grandma had aborted his mom, he wouldn't be here. Heath's notes in order are, yes, we know. Yes. Dear God, what is happening? Yes. The worst. He, it <laughs> takes him so long to explain this. Yeah. And so and to really drive home that if my granny had aborted my mom, I wouldn't be here point that he seems to think is pretty goddamn profound. We bring in his granny to agree with him. Uh, no, I'm so happy I get to tell you this. It's actually dumber than that. We bring in his mom who they have titled granny because they don't realize that if you title a person granny, People will assume that's his grandmother, not the grandmother of your children. I, I see. I think you're wrong there. I, I went back over this a couple times trying to figure out whose goddamn granny she was. But yeah, it really could have been. Hold right. on. It's like one and three or two and four. <laughs> right. Or is it one negative one? Wait, my mom became a granny. So is she my? Do you skip it? Granny? Savannah? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but she explains that fucking Todd comes from a long line of unaborted fetuses all the way back. Mm -hmm. Really? 100% unaborted. And she does such a bad job of pretending that she didn't want an abortion. She's like, yeah, I got pregnant when I was 16 and my boyfriend and his dad came to help me get an abortion, but my dad wouldn't let me go with them. Well, she also says, and you know what? I was never sorry. And I'm like, well, there's something that's never been said truthfully. Yeah, no one ever... I felt the need to say that about something they weren't really sorry about. <laughs> and I love it. We're watching Stockholm Syndrome right now. Is what we're watching. Really? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And also, by the way, hey, Cole, it, like knowing that abortion could have saved us from your existence is not helping your argument. Yeah, I don't know what point. point you think you're making here. You're a Vine star who met your wife on the Harmony app. Like <laughs> you need use some scientists, man. Use some doctors. <laughs> And then, then he goes back to explaining how grandmas work. He's like, oh, no, I got it. Savannah, I got it. I fucking got it. If my grandma has a kid and that kid has a kid, that's me. So d don't abort grandma. Well, and, and then he gets all excited when he realizes that goes the other way, too. He's like, and also, if my kids and their kids, if you abort a baby, you're also aborting all the babies it would have. It's like an infinity tree of murder. murder if you think about it, if you go down, baby. it murders all the way down, <laughs> but it trees out. Did this question give anyone else the hunch that we could convince Cole he was a mass murderer every time he didn't have a baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't hadn't occurred to me, but I think you're right. Yet another day without a baby, Cole. How many infinities did you kill today? Yeah. Cole, so you know granddaughter? <laughs> God damn it. I had a chart. I have a chart at home. Hold on. Let me go get my chart. I'm really sorry. And then he, Todd explains the importance of relentlessly harassing pregnant people. Mm -hmm. This is where we hear from Amy Ford, founder of the Embrace Grace anti-abortion ministry and owner of the fucking movie's silliest hat. Yeah, yep. she's like, maybe if I wear this hat, people won't notice I look like Madonna having an allergic reaction to shellfish. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking for a hat. This is a great hat shop. Uh, I'm thinking either cowgirl or uh, my other thought was Orthodox rabbi on like a day off. And the, oh, the hat both. guy was like, wait a second. <laughs> Today's your lucky fucking day. <laughs> Jerry, bring the dusty box. Put both hands up together and now smush them together. <laughs> Yeah. And here's another great example of them making the right point accidentally. She points out, she's like, you know, the abortion rate in the church is the same as it is outside the church. And that's actually not quite true. It's higher in the church than it is outside of the church because it's a function of poverty. But the point that she doesn't realize she's making is all of our bullshit isn't helping. Yep. Right. We're, we're entirely useless. We're just bullying women who choose to get abortions. They still choose to do it at the same rate. She makes so many good points in a row accidentally here that I wrote in my notes. Shit, do you want to take over, Fat Madonna? <laughs> Get on the mic, girl. So now fucking Savannah is going to pose that. But what if you have virtually any goal as a human being that, you know, isn't compatible with pregnancy question that us pro-abortionists always nail them with, right? Yeah. And to answer that question, we're going to meet Shanice Brown. Glasses. We're going to meet glasses. Yeah, well, yes. Uh-huh. 
but she's someone who chose having a baby over having goals, right? Yeah, she she explains that she was she had a relationship with Jesus starting when she was 15 and then she immediately says that she was homeless at the time and I wrote in my notes so that relationship with Jesus wasn't great, huh? Right. Wasn't yeah, providing uh-huh. a house. Not yet. <laughs> well, and also again, this is them making the right point by accident because what she says she said she found out she was pregnant and thought about having an abortion and she wasn't like but you know, I didn't want to do it because I felt like some moral obligation not to it was Boy, my mom's going to be so shitty about it if I have an abortion. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then she explains that the Madonna hat people, they gave her a onesie. And I wrote in my notes, what an impartial gift. (laughs) And that's what really clinched it for her that she should have a baby. Yeah, right. She, She was a victim of Embrace Grace Ministries. She says, you know, they did everything that that was that uh, we needed done. God took care of my kid. I didn't have to provide anything. I'm like, citation needed. (laughs) I don't believe a God. I would like to have a talk with your kid. (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And she managed to launch her own business, even though she had a kid. So, see, you can pursue your dreams, assuming your dreams are to start a small Etsy based business in your home in your spare time. Where you make bath bombs and and the name you choose gets pushed off Google by TikTokers. I wrote in my notes, she should talk to Jesus about her SEO. (laughs) Okay, the title of her company is Bomb Moms. Yes. Which is Mm -hmm. a great name for an anti-choice terrorist group, actually. Okay. (laughs) That's not great for your SEO. There's a competitor. She does. She doesn't even have the dot com when I checked. She has a dot net, I think. (laughs) But there's a competitor website that's buy bombs help moms.com and it's also selling bath bombs and it's also benefiting like christian pregnancy center type stuff jesus what the- which is weird oh wow mm. did we just pull the first thread in the christian bath bomb mlm that we didn't know <laughs> there's a serious like war going on <laughs> also by the way the bomb moms are, are a mario bad guy too that was already yeah, a that's, thing. That, that too <laughs> yeah so then we sit down with dana who was homeless when she decided not to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. But Embrace Grace helped her, too. Yeah, she says that she had never been treated nicely before. And I was like, that's a fucking bummer, Dana. (laughs) (laughs) Right, and everybody keeps trying to make the argument like, all right, where would the world be if, like, you know, my my parents didn't have me or where would the world be if I didn't have my kid? And she's like, where would the world be without my seven year old boy? He's and she tries to compliment him. And she's like, he's really funny. Yeah, that (laughs) was I laughed for a while. (laughs) So did I, because does Dana realize she's implying that if her seven year old wasn't funny, it would have been better to abort. him. (laughs) But yes, and she has this whole little fucking rant about how selfish it is to have an abortion. She says, you know, I didn't want to be, this is the exact quote, I didn't want to be like, I don't want to have another baby. I like to shop and do other things. But that is not why people have abortions. I yeah, don't, no. I don't think no. that's the thinking that goes into <laughs> oh, it. Oh, you know what? I bet she showed a picture of her shitty seven-year-old kid to Savannah and Cole or whatever the fuck. And they were like, ugh. And Does he at least have a good personality? she was like, he's really, he's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is the, their, their moment of um, very conspicuous altruism. They're like, we decided to give Dana a spontaneous check that was already in my pocket and written out, yeah. but they don't show us the amount on the check. They sure don't, and Dana doesn't cry, so it wasn't that big. <laughs> I I know a $200 check when I see one, my friends. <laughs> and then we essentially just get an ad for a fucking crisis pregnancy center. Right. Yeah. When Anna was pregnant, I really wanted to do a sting on one of these. And we had a long talk with Andrew about it, where he explained that we really could only do it if we promised that no one would get hurt. And so we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. (laughs) But yeah, so they basically say, yeah, there's the we have these pregnancy centers everywhere and we will provide you with literally every single thing your child ever needs. And I'm like, oh, that's 
That must be why there's no child in America going without things. Really? The yep. Pregnancy centers give you like half a million dollars per kid. Just they hand it to you. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> Apparently. No, they, no, they give you like a jar of peas and a box of diapers. They're showing this happen. And then, and then they give you like a baby shower and that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah. It fucking Todd and Allison say like, you know, we did our part. We held a baby shower for some pregnant lady. I'm like, oh, well, now you have fixed her problems. You can have yeah. an abortion shower. They have to let you. I will <laughs> oh. throw it for you. If you have a, a good abortion that you need, I will throw you an abortion shower. Absolutely. 100%. Oh, that is a lucrative, that is a million dollar idea waiting yeah. to happen, folks. Yes. But Noah, I have a question. What about fathers? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, Todd explains that men should also probably take care of the women that they impregnate. He he jumps into the middle of this this abortion documentary and he's like, we've been focusing on women a lot, I feel like. So let's hear the thoughts of men about this. And he explains that it yeah, men need to prevent abortions by being dads. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. It's not like he was about to stand up for pregnant trans men or no, anything no. in his, no, no, <laughs> his no. documentary. No, not no. at all. <laughs> and then he, he corners himself with a hardball. He's like, and people ask, what about the babies that exist? Why aren't we doing stuff for the babies that exist? Great question. Such a great question. So there's actually, there's a big list of problems. Like, so it's about outside of the womb, right? We're always focused on life inside of the womb, life outside of the womb. What's that about? There's a big list of problems outside of the womb. It's like, it's really tough out there. And like, you know, support money. Where was I? What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. His his answer to why don't you do anything about the babies outside of the womb is we did a one day furniture drive this year. Right. It's, it, it's a thing. What I love is that the thing was called one day for L.A. And he, after he tells us about it, he goes, and it wasn't just a one day thing. I'm like, yes, the fuck it was in the yeah. name. <laughs> So finally, we we sit down with Israel Jones. This is a lady who uh, apparently paid for an abortion but didn't get one. Okay. Can we just say the chances that she's lying are exponentially higher than the chances yes. that the abortion pill didn't work? Yes, right? absolutely. The, she, it's 100%. She's, it's a lie. She's lying yeah. about this. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So she's basically what she's trying to sell you is like the idea that if you get an abortion, you might just have that kid anyway magically and then what will you tell them about your abortion plans yeah she says she tried to get an abortion she lost something she doesn't know what she lost and i was just like the rest of this film i was blinded by being like what does she think she lost <laughs> i was probably just taking a shit did it look like ben kingsley or not <laughs> yeah right right she says and i went for the abortion and they just gave me a pill they apparently i had to do this on my own and i'm like did you do do you want them to like crunch it up and spit it into your mouth like a baby bird or they what? didn't put it in peanut butter or anything it was bullshit <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though that's a cute ass baby that was pretty that fucking baby cute baby she had a damn cute baby meh and <laughs> <laughs> two out of three podcasters found that baby cute and of course like every anti-abortion anything ever we close on baby 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 bible quote mm hmm so on that reminder that all it would have taken to avoid all this shit was Todd's grandma having an abortion. We're going to wrap things up for the night. We'll be back with more audacious bullshit for you on the next God Awful Mini. Before we reseal completely tonight, I wanted to encourage you to come see us in Atlanta. The American Atheist Conference starts the same day this episode comes out. So if you're anywhere nearby, please come see us, even if you can only make it for a day, even if you can only make it for a few hours. They have great speakers and workshops going on every day. There's a bunch of awesome people to meet, and we'd love a chance to thank you for listening in person. Links in the show notes for more information. Anyway, that's all the blessing we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even new episode of our half sister show citation needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this show wouldn't fit into the row with the others if I neglected to thank Ethan Wright for never half-assing it, Eli Bosnick for never full-assing it, and Lucinda Illusions, though I'm not going to use any ass references here. I, I also need to thank the inimitable April Paw for providing this week's overly complimentary Farnsworth quote. I'm sure Heath kills it word flip or whatever, but I'm not actually that good at pro-butt. 
fucking destroy you on Swarm, though. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's most indispensable individuals. Janine, Michael, Shanae, the Aether Addict of Stormville, John, Nick, Dylan, JP, Mr. Wolfgang, 556, Starshark, Other, Nick, Teresa, Family, Dino, Ryan, Mark, Disco, Wings, and Wes, whose IQs have more digits than mine has points. Together, these 16 savory secularists summarily supported our sacrilege this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the great and story destiny that it takes to give us money, but if you do, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist, whereby you earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode, or you can make a one time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson hands our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. Eli, how do you think you smell? Meaty? Meaty? Yeah, no, that's yeah, right. Surprisingly meaty. Yeah. yeah, umami, that's it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.